My name is Laura Caldwell and I am a full-time vintage reseller and interior stylist. And in today's episode, I am taking you on the California Route 66 Thrift Tour. about to kick off our California Route 66 thrift tour and for the very first stop of course I had to pick Goodwill and this one is just off of Foothills also known as Route 66 and it is a historic part of California and I'm so excited to take you guys on the thrift tour of a lifetime. On my past trips to Southern California I've always done so good at flea markets but I have not done very well at the Goodwill locations but I'm always an optimist and I'm holding out hope hope for today. It's fun to compare pricing with things that I find back home. These tall brass candle holders typically only sell for around $6.99 to $9.99 back in the Portland area. This one's $29.99, but it is very large. And a pro tip if you ship vintage, these come apart in sections so you can actually take them apart and ship them in a much smaller box. The color and design on this lamp is gorgeous, but it's a little bit too traditional style for me. I would love to find a lamp with this much color and design in a more modern, simple design, maybe a cylinder. And of course, in the very first stop on a Route 66 thrift tour, I'm going to come across something that I would absolutely buy back home. These are beautiful 1970s coffee tables. Check out the stunning wood grain on this. And I really love that it's got the different textures with the cane on the bottom side. I am not sure who the designer is on these, but I know that this style of table sells for hundreds of dollars online. So this is a great deal and I'm excited for someone local to get out here and find it. You know I love to cook and I love the speckled design on these two baker's pans, but when I looked them up online to see how much they were worth, they weren't worth that much. So I decided to pass on them for now because I don't want to pack these in my luggage, but maybe I will come across them back home or I can always buy them on eBay if I can't get them out of my head. The last thing that I need to bring home right now are more project piece clocks. I think I've got enough of those at home. Well, we left empty handed, but that coffee table and end table were really beautiful. I loved the wood grain on them, and I can just imagine that if you added a little bit of wood oil, it would pop even more. So now we're gonna head to the next thrift store on Route 66 and see what we can find there. Next up, we are hitting the MCC Thrift and several local people have told me that this is a great spot. So far, I'm striking out, but I really love this hand-painted wooden bangle that has the beautiful yellow birds on it. It's only $2.99, so I'm gonna grab this piece. Unfortunately, it didn't have a yellow tag, so it wasn't half off today. This is a really pretty silver plated Reed and Barton plate. It's only $5.99. Sometimes these can go for a lot, but the back side of this one looks a little bit worn and I also can find them online for just $30. So I don't think I'm gonna grab this one. If it had more unique design or shape to it, I probably would have picked it up.
right now all I am thinking about is spring and my garden I'm gonna get working on and I think that this is a beautiful little plate it's $5.99 and I don't actually think it's vintage it's just really pretty I think this would be beautiful to use as a soap dish or to put your jewelry on at night but I'm trying not to bring home too much pottery unless it's really cool or really valuable so I'm walking out of Goodwill for the second time today empty-handed Next up, we are hitting a pawn shop that had really good reviews online. This was a fun one to post on Instagram to see how many people could guess what this was. A lot of you thought it was a pill box or a makeup compact, but it is actually a sterling silver yo-yo. They had all of their sterling silver at this pawn shop 50% off, so I only paid $50 for it. It was such a unique find and there was no way I was gonna leave this behind. I found some really great sterling silver pieces. This is one of my favorites. It's a landscape jasper cuff. And I love these pieces with that beautiful sweeping landscape design. It almost looks like a painting of the desert. Now we are headed to the American Cancer Society Discovery Shop. When you go into thrift store after thrift store, you start to really appreciate the places that take the time to really display everything beautifully. It makes it so much more fun to shop when everything is so organized. And I think it's great when they do this because it helps people who don't have a knack at design to kind of see how these pieces could be displayed beautifully in their own homes. Tucked away in the back, I found this beautiful antique photo. I believe that this is in Japan and that is Mount Fuji. And I love the setting with this beautiful Japanese tree in front of the mountain. It's such an iconic shot and it's only $6. I think I might be adding this one to my personal collection. We have a lot of Japanese landscaping at our new home and we've been talking about adding in some more Japanese elements kind of trickled in throughout our home. Now I just need to look for a beautiful mat and frame for this piece. If any of you can read Japanese, please let me know what these stamps say. I would be so, so grateful. And I found two sterling silver chains, which is awesome because I've been picking up a lot of pendants at the pawn shops down here. I found this random Goodwill and it's actually a bookstore. It looks really small from the outside, but we're gonna go ahead and pop in and see if we can find anything. I know exactly what this piece is. They've got the top lid set on here incorrectly. It's actually upside down. And I can't wait to show you at the end of the video when I get back home what I'm gonna use this for. And we're just gonna keep hitting every store we can find. Next up is a lot of good thrift store. This is a beautiful Middle Eastern Dala coffee pot. I've never seen one with the little jewels on it like this. This possibly could be a newer production, but it is so beautiful and it's only $19.99. And I'm really excited to support this thrift store. And it's just so pretty, so I'm gonna grab it. Pretty sure that these are mid-century Dorothy Thorpe goblets, but I'm not positive. They look very, very similar to her pieces. I've never found them in the goblets before, and these are definitely not coming home with me in my luggage. We're not giving up on Goodwill. We are gonna try another spot. I'm pretty happy with my little marble piece from the bookstore, but I'm hoping to find more because back home, I fill my cart at Goodwill. left another Goodwill empty-handed. We have 
have arrived in San Dimas, California. And for those of you who know what I'm about to do, you know. And for those of you who don't, I'm sorry. San Dimas High School football rules. <laughs> Had to do it. Here is a pretty southwestern sterling silver crushed turquoise thunderbird cuff and it's only $12. I'm going to start a pile already. These little Japanese butterfly salt and pepper shakers are so whimsical and beautiful. And for my online vintage spring sale, I'm looking for lots of pops of color. So I think these will be really sweet to add to that sale. I love a good wall pocket vase to add into a gallery wall. This is a vintage Japanese piece and there are two of them and it's $49 for the pair. I think that these will also be beautiful for my upcoming spring sale. Oh my gosh, this looks like my little kitty I had when I was growing up named Meow Meow. I always think of him every time I see a Siamese cat. He was my favorite little buddy. I just loved that cat. This is a beautiful portrait of a lady by Diego Rivera from 1935. This is such a sad and beautiful piece. I'm gonna grab this beautiful old cloisonne ashtray for myself. It's $20, the colors are so pretty on it, and I'm gonna use this to burn incense. These are some fun hand-carved scrimshaw pieces. I love the ones that have the ships on them. I have found rings and necklaces with elk carved into them, and even once I found a tiger. I love when you see something once and then you see it again. This looks very similar to the beautiful tray that I saw in Riverside at the Hologram House. I love these blue color tones with it. Oh my gosh! No, wait, this is all mine. <laughs> these are, this no, is yours. No, they're not for sale. Are you serious? Okay. See? I am so impressed. This is so cool. And there are no duplicates. Wow. Eight hundred thousand a piece. So, so this is your thing. Like this is you, oh, yeah. you chose this. Oh, this yeah, is your this thing. Is my thing. Isn't that cool? Look at all these. Yeah. Okay, there's. Oh there. what, my word! You were not kidding. Yeah, you gotta look at them if you're gonna have them. That's the thing about collections. Yep. These are the leprechauns of Hawaii. Very hard to find. Twelve hundred dollars each. Oh, for the pair. Or for the pair. Oh, really? It can course. actually have fish in it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They get in. Yeah, it works. Oh. That's sweet. Yeah, that's so great. Super excited to find some of these Mexican brass filigree earrings. These have been one of the most requested things for me to find for my online vintage shop. And I typically only find a pair or two in a year of looking. So I'm very happy to find these today. 
This is a fun edged Hamza hand of protection. And this is kind of neat because it can be used as a pin. So you could put it on a bag or you could put it on a coat when you're headed out. And you could probably easily turn this into a pendant necklace too. Can you imagine all of the time it would take to hand paint and create these Chinese cloisonne vases? I love the colors in this one. It is such a sweet and delicate vase. It's a very old one too, you can tell. And it's only $5. I'm always on the hunt for sculptural pieces and anything made in Italy. This duck is really fun. It's $42, but I feel like that's a very good price for such a cool and unique piece. I'm adding this guy to the pile. This bookend looks like it. It is so old. I think that this is probably from the Art Deco era. It's a heavy carved solid marble base with this beautiful profile of a dog. I can't bring this home in my luggage because this thing weighs so much, but I thought it was a really neat piece and I wanted to show you. These are fabulous salt and pepper shakers. They are designer pieces by Dan Droz, or Dan Draws, not sure how you pronounce it, from 1975. And I looked them up online while I was here in the store and they sell for well over a hundred. They're only asking 36 for the pair. I think with a little bit of wood oil, these babies are gonna be stunning. This is the largest vase I have ever seen. What would you even do with this? I feel like you'd have to have such a grand entrance into your home and maybe have some just beautiful branches of a tree coming out of the top of it. Super pretty, I just would never have anywhere to put that. I have some black glass goblets at home and I thought that these were really beautiful, but something in my gut was telling me that they were probably newer productions. I looked them up online while I was in the shop and they are Ikea, so I did not bring them home, but good job Ikea, they are great design. This shop has a ton of vintage jewelry. I found some really great brass and copper pieces in one of the cases that everything was only $5. And I found two beautiful sterling silver rings too. I think this little guy is my favorite find from today so far. He's just so cute. As I was getting ready to check out, I saw that I missed a case that was also only $10 for each item. Out of the entire case, this one butterfly really caught my eye and I am so glad that I grabbed it because it turns out it was a designer piece and it is actually gold plated. These were really fun to find out a little bit of the history on them. They are antique Turkish coffee grinders and the owner of the store even showed me exactly how they are used. You pull off the lid, put on the little handle, grind up your coffee beans, and then they come out in the very bottom section as a perfect little espresso. She purchased them from the estate of the original owner who picked them up on his travels to Turkey many, many, many decades ago. Can you even believe how amazing San Dimas was? I had no idea what to expect and I am just thrilled with my finds today. All three of the vintage stores that I went to were wonderful. I had so much fun talking with the owner of the second one, Sam. We could have probably talked for years about all the different stories he had with vintage. We just had a wonderful time. It was so great to connect with him and I can't recommend his shop enough, especially if you love mid-century tiki he is the expert so go check out his store and support the San Dimas antique community it's a great little downtown area and I can't wait to get home and pull out all of these treasures and show you guys up close and personal what I got and what I have since found out about these pieces since I got them which was like 
20 minutes ago. So I haven't found out much, but I'm gonna do some research, so hopefully I find out more. Next up, we are gonna go to the small town of Claremont. I personally love this town. I think it is so quaint and beautiful. It's got some great shops, really good food. In fact, we had barbecue the other night for our brother-in-law's birthday. If you go to Claremont, you have to go to Gus's Barbecue and try their cornbread. It is incredible. They have this homemade butter and a delicious honey that you drizzle on the top and order your food family style because these platters are huge and you're gonna wanna share. Today I'm gonna take you guys back there so I can show you my favorite vintage store in town called Vintage Odyssey. This piece really caught my attention. I thought it was really unique, kind of creepy, but absolutely awesome. She had it labeled as Fornicetti style surrealist multi-hand sculpture bowl. It was $600 and the owner of the store had looked it up online and they were selling for well over a thousand. This would be such a fun one to have out for Halloween and you have all of the candy in the bowl. But honestly, you could use this all times of the year. I think it's a really unique piece, um, a little bit out of my budget though but it was really cool to see and if you are local and you are looking for pots or plants there is an adorable little garden center on the back side of the vintage store This is one of our favorite towns to go to when we come down to see Jesse's brother and his family. And the main reason we come is because Jesse and his brother love to go to the Rhino Record Store. This is a very famous record store and we make sure to stop here every time we come. I am so excited to share all of the pieces that I got on this California trip. As most of you know, the main thing that I'm trying to source when I come on these trips where I fly is vintage jewelry. That's about 70, 75% of my online vintage shop sales. And I love selling vintage jewelry, not just because I love vintage jewelry and I love to wear it and to find it and to learn things about it, but also because it is easy to travel with. And I have so much fun photographing the jewelry. I didn't know what to expect coming to California because I'm always hearing that the Goodwills are a little bit more expensive down here than up in the Pacific Northwest, but I was pretty blown away by the pricing on the jewelry. I hit up around 15 pawn shops finding this jewelry and made some really great connections down there. I had such a good experience with that. And I also got some of these pieces at the Rose Bowl Flea Market, so you'll probably recognize some of those. And I got some really great vintage for my first Friday sale. And I even got a few pieces that I had never seen before, including this sterling silver yo-yo. How fantastic is this? I purchased it at a pawn shop and I had to leave the store with it because I'd never seen one before. I picked up these wall pockets because I am working on a gallery wall episode and I really wanted to have some beautiful vintage wall pockets to show in that. The owl phone that I found in Long Beach was one of the highlights of this entire trip. You never know what you're gonna find when you go out thrifting, and that's part of what makes it so much fun. If you haven't seen the Long Beach episode, I will link that in the description below. I also got some great pottery. I tried not to pick up too much pottery because I have to be a little bit more careful packing it in my luggage, but I had to grab these pieces because you know I love West Germany pottery and Italian pottery. And I had to get a souvenir for our tiki party because I went to a tiki store. So that just had to happen.
And I love my little needlepoint lion pillows. I think they're so unique and no one else is gonna have them. I got two incredible textiles, this beautiful large giant woven blanket or wall hanging. This one I'm intending to keep. And I'm also planning to keep the small rug that I got for our bathroom. I think it's gonna be the perfect size for our tiny little bathroom. Here's the one brand new thing that I picked up on this trip. This is for my baby niece that was born while we were gone on this trip. This David Salk pottery is the piece out of everything that I'm the most excited about, to be honest. I really, really love this piece and I am so excited to get it home and style it up with my other one. Overall, this was such a successful sourcing trip. I am thrilled with my finds. I found some really wonderful deals, but most importantly, I was able to spend a week down here with my family and I squeezed in lots of thrifting in between. We are gonna have some fun making some garlic butter for this beautiful marble French butter dish. Soft butter, a little bit of crushed up Parmesan, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, a little bit of the large flake salt on top of the bread once I have it all smothered. Got it all whipped up and tasted it to make sure it's perfect. So just add in whatever herbs and spices you want to make it the flavors you want. You don't even have to do garlic. And then we're gonna go ahead and put all of this butter here in our new little French butter dish. I've got my butter packed in over here and my cold water here. So now I will show you how this works. It's not gonna fall out. You just take it, turn it upside down and put it into the cold water. And voila, your butter will not go rancid. Does it make your butter wet? <laughs> well, it's kind of on the bottom. So watch when you pull it up, go like this. It's like a little bit wet. There's like a few drops on there, but you can just kind of shake them off. No, there's only like six drops. Not too bad. That's what I think Lorenzo too. <laughs> I think it's pretty fantastic. And I think everyone should have one. I wanted you to see the scale of this beautiful rug that I picked up at the Rose Bowl Flea Market. I don't think I ever really pulled it out so you could see how beautiful the design and colors were. I just love this piece. We don't plan on keeping it here on the floor. I actually think I'm gonna have it on the end of my bed at some point. It's a really, really beautiful one. It goes so good with our style. I had so much fun filming this Route 66 thrift tour. I feel like when I'm out filming these episodes that you are actually with me on this thrift trip. I hope that's translating across the screen because knowing that I'm taking you with me on this trip makes it so much more fun to film it. So I hope you are enjoying these thrifting adventures because I am loving going on these adventures and getting the opportunity opportunity to take you with me. I assumed that the jewelry in the pawn shops in California was going to be a lot more expensive than back at home in Oregon. And I was completely wrong. I found so much incredible jewelry that I'm about to show you and the pricing was really wonderful, which means that I can come to California again so we can go on another adventure down here in California. My favorite city on the Route 66 was San Dimas, for sure, like not even a question. And it wasn't just because I found some really good vintage, but I made friends there. All three of the vintage stores that I went to, the owners were just wonderful and I had a great time chatting with them. I ended up spending the entire day at just those three shops because they had such great selections and we were sharing so many great stories. If you are local, please go to San Dimas and show these vintage shops some love. Go and find some awesome treasures because I know they could use the support and I'm confident you're gonna find some good stuff there. Jesse and I had a wonderful trip to California. We got to spend some really good quality time with his brother and our sister-in-law and I was able to fit in a lot of vintage shopping and thrifting on the trip, which for me and you makes it even more fun. I thought I'd go ahead and kind of tell you guys what's going on over the next couple months here on my YouTube channel. So California Adventure Series is now complete and we are moving on to an entire month 
packed with Goodwill haul and decorating videos. I have been missing my local Goodwills because as you know, they are the best Goodwills in the entire country. So we are gonna go together to all of the Goodwills and see what treasures we find over the next few weeks. I have a special makeover episode on our breezeway that's gonna be coming out. And then we are ready for the most exciting adventure of my lifetime thus far. And we have finalized the details of our Europe trip. We are kicking off our European trip, celebrating my 40th birthday. I cannot believe I'm 40. The only thing that's great about turning 40 is that I always wanted to be a fun grandma. Like my whole life, I always wanted to be that fun grandma. And now I'm realizing that I still feel like I'm 20. I sometimes still act like I'm 20. And the fact that I'm 40 and I still feel so young at heart makes me really hopeful that I'm gonna get to be that cute, fun, old grandma. So I'm very excited about turning 40 and we are going to be celebrating that in London. My sister and my two adult nieces are joining Jesse and I for five days in London and I'm gonna be filming the entire thing. We're gonna be going to flea markets, thrift stores, antique stores. We're going to eat all the British food and I'm taking you to some incredible historic locations. And then we are headed to Paris for an additional five days. After Paris, my nieces and sister fly home and it will be Jesse and I solo for an additional three weeks. We're taking you to Portugal. We're going to go to Zurich, Switzerland, and we are going to do a grand tour of Italy. And you guys are going to get to meet my parents too, because just randomly, my parents and my older brother and his wife planned a trip to Europe together and the dates overlap in Venice, Italy. So we are going to be meeting up with my parents in Venice, Italy for a long weekend. It's going to be so special to share that weekend over in Venice with all of you. My parents haven't been to Europe since the early 80s. My mom and dad actually won a trip to Holland on a radio station back in the early 80s and my ancestors are actually from Holland so that was really special for them to get to do that trip and I was a little kid when they went last and that's the only time my dad has ever been to Europe just to Holland and my mom did go to Europe when she was young she went with her older sister who I believe was 18 I think my mom was around 16 and then they also took their baby sister who was like 12 13 14 she was much much younger and the three of them backpacked around Europe for a few months when they were teenagers, all by themselves. And when they ran out of money, my granddad would wire them money. And he had no cell phones back then. I mean, this was in the 1960s. So I am pretty confident that I got my wild adventurous side of me from my mama. So there is a lot to look forward to. This is just the next two months. We're gonna go Goodwill shopping and then we're going to Europe together. And I am just so happy and honored and grateful to get to take all of you with me on these adventures. So thank you so much. I will see you guys in a brand new episode soon.